Johanna Basford describes herself as an ink evangelist, choosing pens and pencils over pixels, and she's a big part of a publishing phenomenon, colouring in for adults. I draw everything by hand. I don't like the computer. I use it as a finishing tool only. So I really like that my circles aren't quite perfect and that my lines are a little bit wobbly. Um, and once I've drawn all the artwork in pencil, I redraw it in ink, um, and then I scan it into the computer. And I use the computer right at the end to sort of tidy things up. So if the dog has sneezed under my desk and the pen sort of shot off a little bit, I might tidy that up. Her books have been translated into 28 languages. The latest black and white wonderland, she said, imagines the last big unexplored territory, a magical depiction of marine life that draws on her experiences in rural Aberdeenshire. My mum and dad are actually both marine biologists, um, so we spent a lot of time as kids on research vessels and at scientific aquariums, um, and we couldn't get through a seafood dinner without somebody dissecting your main course. So. I just always had a very fishy upbringings um, and grew up around that sort of imagery. She spent 10 years as a commercial illustrator, but four years ago one of her clients persuaded her to produce images others could put their mark on. It was very much a passion project, so it was something I was doing alongside my commercial illustration work and I just really wanted to do it. There wasn't a market for colouring in books, I didn't ever think it was going to be a big thing. In fact, we printed 16,000 copies of the first one and I thought my mum was going to have to buy loads of them. <laughs> so um, and then we just sort of started seeing the colouring books taking off and we've now got to the point where um, I'm so focused on colouring books that the commercial illustrations had to take a bit of a sideline. Her fantasy worlds have been bought by millions of people worldwide. Some claim it's therapeutic, stress reducing. Others believe its roots lie in a Peter Pan market fueled by a fashion among adults for childhood experiences. In part, their success is down to them being reimagined as a form of relaxation. Adding to the intricate scenes appears to provide people with a sort of meditation, an escape from a world filled with screens. But there's also a sense of nostalgic indulgence too, an achievement in being able to keep within the lines. I think people are just really craving a digital detox. We spend so much of our lives staring at screens and iPads, checking in online, and we just want that opportunity to switch off and to do something analogue. Social media, though, is what many use to post their creations, gaining fans and offering tips with a growing community of enthusiasts in China, Brazil and France. I get emails and messages from you know, really busy mums that are doing it after the kids have gone to bed, from charity workers that are doing it at the weekends, to stressed out bankers and lawyers that are saying, oh, I like to do it with a glass of wine on a Friday. What do you say to those purists who claim that it's not a creative process, colouring in someone else's work? Well, I would say go in my colouring gallery and look at those pictures that are uploaded because they are amazing. and. You know, for me, I get to collaborate with people all over the world that are infinitely more creative and more talented than I am. And they do things with those drawings that are just phenomenal. Like, it blows my mind, the different techniques and the colour palettes. I think for every book that's sold and people are putting down their iPads and picking up pens and pencils and being creative, you cannot quibble with that.